again, my name is Andrea Norfolk, and I am the president of Shoreline Destinations. Um, we have two different websites. We have one focusing on honeymoons and family travel, couple travel, um, all that multi-generational travel. And then we have our destination wedding website because we do so many destination weddings. We really have so much content that we created this destination wedding website. So um, you'll see that on the screen here. I recommend going there um, to look at information. You'll be able to see some of our featured couples on there, where they've gone, um, and really get a lot of information right off the bat on our website. So I'm going to start right now so I don't hold you all up all nights. Why we love destination weddings. Okay, so there, there's a lot of reasons why. And we just had we just had a couple come back from one this past weekend in Jamaica. And she sent me a bunch of pictures last night. And for me, it's a lot of work. It's a lot, lot of work to get there. And it can be a little stressful just making sure we're, we're handling all your guests and making sure everybody arrives and, and handling all the protocols with COVID. But the end result is absolutely stunning. Um, and, you know, so these are some of our top 10 reasons why we love a destination wedding. There, there is truly less planning involved because when you're doing it at a property, they already have vendors, whether it's floral, the cakes, the photographers, um, decor, they have vendors there ready to go. So when you uh, pick your resort or your property, you're already going to have packages, you're going to have vendors to see the, the different samples. It really is a lot less uh, planning and, and detail work on your end. Um, the perfect location. I mean, again, look at look at this one. This is in Puerto Vallarta. Um, we have favorite locations around the Caribbean and Mexico. And you know, when you're sitting in paradise, you don't need to spend thousands upon thousands upon thousands in decor because your your setting is right there. You don't need all the florals. You don't need all those extras unless you really want it. You've got a stunning background right there. Um, the vibe again, it, you know, it, you're celebrating multiple days with your family and friends. So it's not just one night. You're really, um, you know, building up to the final event and that makes it really exciting for your guests and for you. Uh, pictures, obviously the pictures here, again, you're going to get some amazing pictures when you're doing it at a destination because most likely you're doing it outside. You're probably not going to pick a ballroom. I mean, you can pick a ballroom, but most, most couples want to have their wedding um, outside and the reception outside. So you're going to get some amazing pictures if you do it at sunset. Uh, you know, you just, you, you can't beat it. We love seeing the pictures. We absolutely, it makes like everything we do when we see the pictures, it's like, okay, this is why we do what we do. Um, exploring a new place. A lot of times some couples come to me and they say, we went here and we loved it. And now we want to get married there. But a lot of times couples are looking for something completely new that they've never been to. So that's where during our initial consult call, I'm listening to everything that they want. And I've been to so many resorts um, over the past nine years that it really is easy for me to narrow things down pretty quickly for couples. Um, I'm very picky. I know, you know, what's good without being, you know, going crazy on money. So very quickly after our call, I can narrow it down usually to six to eight properties for couples to review and figure out what their favorite is. Um, again, quality time with guests. You're not just spending four hours with guests. You're spending maybe four days with guests. So, um, you know, that's a, a great way to, to really spend time with your friends and family. And it turns into a vacation. You don't know how many. I mean, normally, you know, what turns into a three or four night event, um, most of the guests or a lot of our guests end up extending their stay. They turn it into a vacation. So. Many times we have guests that stay on seven nights. They, they turn it into a vacation. 
And then the cost, we'll get into this, um, but there really is some incredible cost savings uh, <clears throat> for doing a, a wedding internationally. Um, you really can save a lot of money versus doing it here in the United States. And let's see, wedding night and honeymoon location. Again, um, you know, this is, you're, 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 you're sort of hitting both because you're having your wedding and then right after you may decide to stay for four or five days. Um, whether your guests stay or not, that's up to them. And a lot of times what I'll do for couples is after the wedding, they may stay one or two nights at the resort and then their guests leave and we transfer them to a different resort within that destination. Um, so that's really fun because we can still turn it into a honeymoon uh, and I can give you recommendations for other properties that maybe are a little more romantic or, or boutique-y um, and then you might want to spend three or four nights there and end your event that way. Uh, and a place to go back to. We've had couples that uh, on their one year anniversary, they go back to the resort. Sometimes they bring friends along. So again, it's, you know, you're creating memories from the get go. So that's our top 10. That's why we love destination weddings. Um, and I got into it, you know, years ago after doing just standard family, um, couple trips, honeymoons. Um, the market has really, really taken off in the past four or five years with, uh, you know, people that want destination weddings. And so these resorts are really set up to handle it now. And it's amazing in the years that I've been in the industry, how I've watched this segment just completely grow. Um, so again, we have such a great team of ladies and we've had to expand our team just to handle the weddings um, that we have. So, and we're currently into 2023, um, mid to late 2023 with, with weddings. That's not to say you couldn't do something at the end of this year, but things are booked up. It's, it's not easy. Um, people, uh, there's a high demand for, for weddings. These are just some of our couples, um, some of our past couples. Um, Really, these are everybody's in different locations. We have somebody in Jamaica, we have somebody in Cabo, somebody in the Bahamas, somebody in the Dominican. So um, again, we uh, have recommendations really all around the Caribbean and Mexico, and that really is our focus: Caribbean and Mexico. We don't do a lot of, uh, you know, domestic weddings. That's not um, our our niche. It's really Caribbean and Mexico. We um, dabble in Europe a bit, but tend to stick with Caribbean and Mexico. And I'm just going to go through a couple of our, these are real weddings that we've done, um, just to give you an idea of, again, the cost savings here. So here's one in Jamaica. And again, these are all within the past, I mean, obviously COVID there, we had a, we had a few weddings in the beginning of 2020, but um, for the most part, these are, we tried to do more recent weddings, whether it's 2021 um, or we've had some early 2022. So this one is in, was in Jamaica, 42 guests. They had a welcome, um, you know, basically a welcome dinner, like a, a cocktail hour, welcome reception for an hour, wedding ceremony and reception. They spent 400 on decor, 200 on their cake. And then we had the, the audio visual. So that's going to be obviously your DJ, your sound system, um, and then photography. They spent 40, uh, you know, approximately $4,200. That is, you know, again, for 42 guests. And this is at an all inclusive resort. So the food and drink for all those guests, the whole time they stayed, the guests are paying really for it's like a vacation for them. Um, so again, $4,200 for 42 people in Jamaica. Andrea, we got a question on deposits. How does that work? How does the payment work? Okay. Um, so and we'll, we'll get into that in a little more detail. And if anyone signs up for a consultation call, basically on our website, we have a button where you can click to schedule a, a complimentary consultation for 45 minutes. And I'll really get in depth with... Um, how the deposits work, but essentially you're going to, you first have to secure your, once we figure out what resort, we have to secure your date and time. That's going to be a non-refundable deposit of normally 250 to 
for the resort to hold your date and time. And then depending on how many guests you have, will determine what your, we're going to secure a block of rooms for your guests. So if your wedding is not until uh, late 2023, we're taking those rooms out of inventory for the general public. So we are securing that inventory. So it's guaranteed to you and your guests to book for the next year at the same rate. So everybody pays the same price. Um, that is a secondary contract that's called a room block contract. And normally the room block contracts are 2,500 mini minimum to 3,000 but that money goes towards your room. So again, we'll explain all that later, but your initial deposit, I would have the figure of around 3000 in your head and it all depends on how many rooms we need to reserve. So you'll have two different contracts, two different deposits. Um, and again, I take it step by step. It's, it's, it's not overwhelming. We, we sort of do things in an order so that nobody gets stressed out and we just sort of walk through the process as we go. Um, and again, I'll touch on this. If you sign up for an individual consultation, we'll touch on that as well. Hopefully that answers questions on um, how the deposits work. And as far as the guest deposit, we'll talk a little further. This is just for you as the bride and groom or the bride and bride or the groom and groom. This is um, talking about how we initially set up your ceremony to reserve that and also your rooms, how to reserve that. And then we can talk further about, um, you know, how, how it works for your guests and how they can pay along the way and what their deposit is. You think that answers it, Ellen? Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. So here's another one. Um, this was in Cabo. Um, they had 70 guests and again, they were, they had a welcome, like a welcome cocktail hour. You usually do that a day or two before your ceremony, um, when, when the majority of your guests are arriving. So they were able to do a cocktail hour welcome reception. Um, and then we had the ceremony and reception and they had their decor, wine, cake, uh, DJ package. Um, and they, they use the DJ over multiple days for their events. Um, and then obviously some uh, video and, and photographies probably, no, well, no, that wouldn't be photography. They probably flew in their photographer. So again, you have options. You don't have to use a photographer that the resort um, gives you. If you don't like the, the photography, you can always fly in. Um, a photographer, we have many people that do that, you know, photography is a big deal and they want to go with someone they, they know or trust. Um, you obviously are going to have to pay for their room, but, um, you know, a lot of times couples will fly in their photographer. Uh, so again, for 70 guests, uh, again, a ceremony reception, which was stunning. I know which, I know which, uh, wedding this was absolutely stunning, $10,360 for 70 guests. Um, so it's just, it's, it's hard to beat these prices compared to what you pay in the United States. And then here's one more. This is in Cancun. They had 63 guests. We did, they had a welcome reception again. They had a fiesta dinner. So they did, a, you know, like a rehearsal dinner. So they had their welcome reception for everyone. Then they had a rehearsal dinner, their ceremony reception, um, wedding package was 10,000. And then they had the mariachi band. I mean, all these extras here, um, which are so fun and make it so unique. You know, this is where it's not cookie cutter. They're so, like I said, these resorts, um, really know what they're doing. They know what couples want. They ask you to create um, an inspiration board that you might find on Pinterest. They love for couples or brides to send over the inspiration and then they will get price quotes on those types of things. Um, so you can decide if that falls within your budget. So this was, um, you know, they, they really threw in a bunch of extras here. Um, and then the decor of flowers, they did some additional hours uh, with the bar or they might've done upgraded liquor package, um, you know, 
top shelf potentially. I mean, a lot of times these places already have top shelf, but there are some additional liquors that you can can get um, or wine, different wines um, that may be additional. Uh, so, and then the DJ package and video. So they spent 25,000. So, you know, that's more in line maybe with something here in the United States, but they did an awful lot. Um, and this was stunning. They did it on the beach. They had the string lights. Um, so again, it's all where your budget falls. And if you have a higher budget, you're going to be able to do a lot of these extras. If you don't have that high of a budget, then, you know, you cut back on some of this stuff. But like I said, the setting is so pretty and so beautiful that you don't need to do a whole bunch. Um, so I would say on average, our couples are around 10 to 15,000. That's around average of what people spend for, you know, anywhere between 60 and 70. 70 guests. I think that's a, you know, pretty, pretty solid figure. And again, I'm not involved in all the little details, uh, but I usually see the final invoice. Um, so I have a good idea uh, of what, you know, what things cost. So, so hopefully that gives you an idea on what you're going to spend at some of these different locations based on what you get. Um, and then here's just a comparison you know, again, especially in Mexico, but even in the Caribbean, I mean, there's different resorts out there that really offer a lot that are already included. Um, but you can see, um, and I'm sure, you know, if you've started to research uh, doing a wedding here, I can almost bet you it's going to be substantially less elsewhere. And I have some people that get a hold of me and they want to do something in Florida or, um, you know, I've had a few where they've said, let's do it in Florida. And then when I get the quotes, they can't believe it. And we immediately go to the Caribbean or Mexico. So again, just cost comparisons there. Um, favorite destinations, gosh, uh, I, I, I have a bunch, but, you know, I think Mexico gets a really bad rap. Um, I absolutely love the Cancun and Riviera Maya. I think there's some incredible resorts there, whether you're doing adult only or family friendly. Um, I can't even count how many times I've been to Mexico and I, I, I just love it. I love it. Um, Cabo is another great one. Now, if you're on the East Coast, it's a little tougher to get there, um, but it's worth the trip. I'll be headed to Cabo in... Uh, three weeks. So um, excited to get that back there. And then Turks and Caicos is one of my all time personal favorites. Um, it's it just the the water is absolutely stunning. It's like what you would see on a postcard with the white sand and the clear water. Uh, so that's, that's a neat location. Now they don't have tons of all inclusives there. So we have to be careful. A lot of their properties are boutique um, properties that are not all inclusive. So for those couples that are looking for something very high end and don't really want to go the all inclusive route, you're going to spend more. Um, but we had a stunning wedding in Turks and Caicos, uh, November and Ellen was a part of that one. And the, the pictures, it, it was absolutely stunning. Um, and then Jamaica, we, we have our favorites there as well. Uh, I just returned from Jamaica last week and, was at four different resorts. Again, I've been multiple times. So um, this is a part of my job. And then Dominican Republic um, was just there in December. We had a stunning wedding there uh, in December and multiple weddings um, coming up in the spring and summer in the Dominican. So um, I travel all over the place. I travel a lot. Um, and I do that so that I can visit as many resorts as possible so that I can um, only give you what I think is going to be to that caliber um, of what I recommend. So I'm constantly traveling. So these are my favorites. And they're also, uh, other than Turks and Caicos, which is going to price higher, um, the other ones are going to come into like what you saw with those examples on pricing. So um, those are our favorites. And that's where we do the majority of our weddings. And, and we can run through this again, um, this during the consult, we will talk about it. And one of the main questions I'll ask you is, 
Do you want a symbolic ceremony or do you want a civil ceremony? A symbolic means you are going to the courthouse, you're going to get married, whatever, a week ahead. Um, you're not going to tell anyone, you're just going to go do it. It's going to be legalized here in the United States. And then you're just going to go to your destination. None of your guests know the difference. The ceremony itself is run exactly like uh, a standard wedding ceremony would be. So whenever you get married in destination, that is your anniversary date. That's what you're celebrating because that's what everybody knows. Um, I think I'm at like 98% of weddings. This is what they do. It's just easier. Um, when you want a civil ceremony, that means we are, you are legally getting married in that destination that you choose. There are additional requirements. Uh, Mexico does require blood work. Um, you have to make sure a judge, uh, a, like a legal officiant is there and available. And some of these destinations, there's not that many of them. And so not only are we trying to secure the date and time for your wedding, but we have to make sure that we can get the uh, officiant there on that day. Um, if there's one officiant and there's 20 hotels and there's all these people trying to get married on the same date, obviously it's first come first serve. So again, most of our couples, um, have, again, 98% of them, they're getting married ahead of time in the United States. Um, so <clears throat> that is a very important thing that I'll be talking to you about um, when we fill out the form to secure your date and time. The resorts have to know immediately which way you're going with this. Um, Andrew, we had a question come in earlier just on if they have a friend that wants to officiate their wedding. Mm -hmm. Can they do that? How's that handled? Do you have couples that do that? Yeah. Yep, we do. And that's absolutely fine. Um, because it's, you know, they, they, the resorts have people, again, if you're doing a symbolic, uh, the resorts have people that that's what they do. They, they handle the ceremonies, but we have a lot of couples that have someone that they've designated to officiate their wedding. And that's totally fine. You would just tell your planner that you already have someone, um, not a big deal. Okay, so we're going to get into the wedding timeline, um, and I'm not going to run through all of this. Again, when you you know meet with me, we can can run through a lot of this stuff. But the majority of our weddings, like I said, the demand is so high right now. Um, you know, you have to plan at least a year in advance. You have to give your guests time to get their rooms booked. A lot of people like to pay along the way. It, it's really tough to do a wedding and a destination wedding in under 12 months. And I don't really recommend it because normally it leads to a little more stress for both you and your guests. Um, so again, anything 12 to 18 months, somewhere in that range is a good, good, um, you know, time frame. That's when you're going to reach out to me. We're going to start that discussion, um, narrow down your resorts, get, your date and time locked in, get your rooms locked in. Um, and then we will create a personalized, uh, once we have everything secured, we will create a custom website for you um, that you will give out to your guests. You can do then formal invitations with that link on there. Um, some people like to do save the dates. Some people like to email like to their close friends and family and give them the website ahead of time and tell them to get their rooms booked. Um, so you will have a custom website from us, um, which will have all the details. And I'm not sure if we're going to run through one of those tonight, Ellen. But again, when you have the uh, consult call with me, I actually pull up a sample of what that wedding website will look like. Um, so one of the things that's very important is that you you know, a standard wedding, you might send your invites out, I don't know, six months in advance. We recommend more like nine to 11 months because again, we've secured all these rooms, but we can't hold it up to the day of your wedding. So you're going to have to release any rooms that aren't booked. We have to release those normally around two to three months before your event. So you want to give your guests a, a solid 
six to eight months where they can put the deposit down on their room, which is usually two, three hundred dollars, um, maybe four hundred, depending on which resort. And then you want to give them time for those that want to pay along the way or not have, you know, make two payments. You want to give them time to do that. And we've seen situations where couples have booked their wedding a year in advance and then didn't send the invites out. And by the time the invites came, the date to book the room was a month or two before they had to pay in full. And we had, you know, guests upset that they didn't have more time to pay and it's nothing we can do about it. It's what the resort, what the property has said in the contract. So it's very important to start that invite process much earlier than you would here in the United States. Um, and then, you know, four to eight months, usually your wedding planner is not assigned to you until mm, seven, between five and seven months, depending on the resort you're not going to have a wedding planner. You're going to create your inspiration board. You're going to start your list of questions. Um, and then an introduction will be made with your planner. So around the four, four, five to seven month range is when a planner will be assigned to you. And then you'll start that communication. And I'll make that introduction. I try to be on the first planning call to listen in to get an idea. And then towards the end, if couples feel like they want me there, I will, I will jump on those calls. Um, so I try to stay involved as much as I can. And uh, Andrea, the, hmm? and Andrea, the, uh, having the planner on site that's included in their fees. Yes. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So you're not paying additional for a planner. Now, Again, if you're if you have a large budget and you are going to be doing a lot of extras um, and you don't have the time to go back and forth with the planner, because I can tell you it gets a little these resorts are busy. They are churning out weddings every single weekend. Um, that's how how busy it is. In fact, I just was securing one for June of 2023, which you'd think there'd be, you know, plenty of dates. There were not. Um, so we had to go back and, and get another date. So that's, you know, again, it seems like this is, you've got plenty of time, but weddings, this is, these resorts are busy, busy, busy. So th there can be some frustration with not hearing back, um, you know, island time, but sometimes island time is like weeks and couples can start getting frustrated. So that's when I have to step in. Uh, occasionally. So if you're one of those that has a solid budget and you can afford to have a planner, whether they're here in the United States or there, um, you know, it is an option. And then obviously, if you're hiring a planner, that's going to be an additional cost. Otherwise, if you're be comfortable with doing a lot yourself, then the wedding planner on property is, is included. You're not paying extra to have that planner. Um, okay. And then, you know, again, two to three months, you're getting, you know, all, all your, all your final details sort of nailed down. Uh, one month prior, we're sending out a no before you go fact sheet to your guests, um, with, you know, COVID protocols, dress code, where the events are, uh, recommended excursions, um, you know, a whole bunch of information around a month, you know, 30 days is when things really start to pick up with the communication uh, between us and your guests. We're, we're collecting flight information. We're making sure they have transportation to and from the property. We're arranging that 90% uh, of the time. So, um, you know, the 30-day the mark is really when things kick into gear, uh, both on finalizing your details with your planner and on our end, with finalizing travel details. Um, and then a week before your event, usually you're going to property, you have to be on property at least two business days prior to your event. So if you're having a Saturday wedding, you're gonna need to be there by Thursday. Um, some people, you know, again, a lot of guests arrive on a Thursday. So we have couples that will come in on a Tuesday or Wednesday so they can be ahead of their guests because when their guests come in on Thursday or Friday, they want to be able to hang out with their guests. So, um, you know, most of our couples stay at least six nights, if not seven nights. Um, so that's sort of the, the process, um, quick overview of the process.
And then um, again, just just a few a few final tips. Um, you know, it's all about the location, and that's my job to listen to what you want. You know, depending on where you're located and where the majority of your guests are located, what's easiest to get to. Um, again, is a is a great beach important to you? Is it not? Um, all these things are things that we go through in the consultation call so that I can narrow it down very, very quickly for you instead of you scouring the internet and the 150 resorts in Mexico alone, um, in Cancun. You know, I've, I've been to so many and I know which ones are good. I know which ones have great wedding departments and normally the planning team is responsive. And that's important to me because when I'm, you know, recommending a resort, I, I know which resorts have issues with communication on getting back with couples. And that, I don't like to recommend those resorts because then ultimately it's leading to frustration on your end. And then I'm having to get involved with escalating things. So, um, you know, again, we'll, we'll sort of talk through all these, all these points. Um, again, notify your guests, you have to give them time um, to pay for their room, get their travel arrangements. If you're doing adult only and they have kids, they have to get their childcare set up. Um, you know, again, of course we recommend using a travel advisor. I, I can tell you, um, while you could do it, it's a lot, it's a lot. And I have a team of women to help me because it's that much. Um, so, you know, dealing with your, the details of your ceremony and reception and figuring out that is enough. You don't want to then have to figure out, uh, somebody wants this room or they want to stay extra nights or what flights should they do? You know, it, it's just too much on one person. So, um, of course we, we recommend using us, um, Again, a wedding website's important. Um, having all those details, um, ours are very comprehensive. It's a lot of information on our wedding website um, that we create for you, but you know, we answer every question we can think of right off the bat for your guests. And then hire a great photographer. Um, you know, whether you're doing a, a domestic wedding or international, I, I just think photography is so important. Um, and you want to make sure, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to, you know, go through the trouble of doing this in another country, um, to me, having these sorts of memories with these pictures, like this one here, this was an incredible photographer, and they actually flew this photographer in from the United States. So again, um, you know, that's where you may want to spend some money um, and spend a lot of uh, your budget to, to have these sorts of pictures and, and videography, the, the, the drone footage I've seen um, from some of the different videographers is absolutely incredible. Um, again, you're on a beach or you're in a gazebo by the beach and the drone footage they get of the guests is just, you know, it's, it's really, really neat. Um, so those are some of the, some of the tips. Um, and then when working with us, again, I touched on this, I'm going to be able to narrow down which resorts are right for you very, very quickly after our consult. I usually, by the end of the call, I've already have four, five, six in my head that I'm going to present to you. Um, dedicated agent, again, you're doing this internationally. For you to attempt to set up a room block um, and manage questions from your guests on travel, it's not easy. So you're going to have somebody here in the United States. I'm going to be the main agent. Um, and then there will be at least one other wedding coordinator um, that will handle getting all the rooms booked for your guests and the transportation and flights. And her and I will work together. Um, and then I'm sort of looped back in 30 days prior to make sure everything's sort of buttoned up and looks good and get that communication out to your guests. So you're always gonna have both myself and one other team member assigned to your wedding. So you will have two of us at all times and so will your guests to reach out for questions. Um, 
you know, competitive pricing again, um, you know, whatever you're seeing online, whatever your guests see, we're getting that or better. Um, it's rare we have to price match anything. I mean, there's always the onesie twosies, but for the most part, uh, the rates we get are fantastic. Again, we're working directly with the properties. Um, we know how these contracts work, um, you know, so pricing wise, your guests aren't going to pay more than what they see online. Um, so we know that's important. Personalized ceremony, again, there's, there's the base package and then you can make it whatever you want. It all depends on your budget. So there will be base packages for different resorts, which I give to you. Um, and then you add on whatever extras you want. And like I said, these properties, this is what they do. They know how to do it. And you're not just gonna have a cookie cutter ceremony. You're gonna be able to customize whatever you want. Again, the more customization you do, it's going to come at a cost. So you just have to prioritize, um, you know, the budget and what's important to you within that budget. Guest reservations. Again, we do a lot of communication with your guests. Um, they reach out to us uh, all the time. Um, that's what we're here for. So we're going to handle all that. You're not going to have to get involved, or you shouldn't have to get involved, really. Once your website's set up, you know, you might reach out to some people or they may have some random questions, but for the most part, you're going to direct them to us or you're going to direct them to your wedding website. Um, so it's very hands off for you, which is nice. You don't have to deal with all the minutia of the travel arrangements. Um, <clears throat> guest activities, again. We've been here, we know which excursions are great if they wanna do something off property. Most of these resorts, I have my favorite restaurants. I can give some tips on which, what I like, um, you know, that sort of thing. So we're going beyond just the ceremonial reception. We're giving some helpful hints and tips um, for people that are looking to do activities off property or even on property. Um, so that's all included when working with us. Um, we also, again, um, you know, we, we do a lot of weddings and couples, you will have the opportunity, not only are your rates going to be, um, you know, what's online for your guests, you're not, you know, your guests are not paying more, uh, you have a lot of perks and incentives when, when getting a room block, um, and when working with us, there's terms and conditions with this, but if you, you know, depending on the property, if you have 15 plus rooms, which we don't do a lot under 15 rooms, I just have to say, you know, most of our weddings are at least 15 rooms or more. We can do smaller weddings, but we'll have to talk about that because we can, you know, it has to do with the contract, the type of contract. So, um, but if you have 15 plus rooms, which most of our weddings do, you have the opportunity to earn a thousand dollar air credit. So most of our couples get to their destination for free. Um, on top of the incentives that come with your room block, most of our couples don't pay for their room um, or pay very, very little for a seven night stay and usually an upgraded room category. So there's a lot of incentive for couples to do a destination wedding. Not only is the ceremony reception affordable, but the, your personal travel is um, very, very affordable. So you'll see down here um, to, to book a complimentary consultation. Again, head to our website, uh, shorelinewed.com. It's all about destination weddings. Again, this is our, our website dedicated to destination weddings because we do so many. So there's a lot of great information on there and you'll see where you can click and just sign up for a consultation. Um, and then we'll have a 45 minute one-on-one -on -one um, I like to do it via Zoom because our couples are located all over the United States and I feel like it's more personal. Um, I like to get to know my couples and, um, you know, them to know me. And so to me, it's important to try to do it as a Zoom just so, you know, uh, we, we can, it, it feels more personal. So you can just go online there and schedule your consultation. Uh, and again, we're all over social. So please, um, if you're not following us already, please, here's, here's just a small portion of, of our ladies here, but um, 
We're on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. Um, so please, we try to be very current with that. Again, our wedding that just happened this weekend, we're starting to post some pictures. Uh, so please uh, make sure to, to follow us. Um, our main page is Shoreline Destinations. And then we have you know, our, our focus on the weddings. So we have Shoreline Weddings as well. So, and now we will open it up. I did a lot of talking there. Hopefully I didn't run too over. Ooh. Oh gosh, it's I'm running way over. Okay, Ellen, what what questions are there any is there anything I didn't answer? Yep, we have we have a couple questions. Okay. Um, and uh, some good ones. Um, I want a destination wedding, but don't want it on a beach, maybe a terrace or garden. Any suggestions? I know you've heard this a lot. Some some brides don't want to have their heels in the sand or yeah. you know other reasons. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Personally, I'm, I would not want to do a beach just because I feel like my hair would be blowing all over the place, like in this picture. Um, but no, we, you know, we, it, it seems to be a mix. We have couples that want to do it on the beach, but a lot of these resorts, you just have to tell me that again, that would be part of the initial consultation. And you would say that I'm, you were looking for maybe a gazebo or a rooftop terrace or a lawn that's maybe near the beach, but just not on the beach. That's a very important detail. Um, and again, I know which properties offer these other uh, options for those that don't want to do it on a beach. So, yep, that's just something we would go over in the consultation. And I know the one destination wedding I went to, uh, they actually built an aisle on the beach so mm -hmm. that the bride and groom could walk down the aisle. You know, the rest of the guests, you know, they were still in the sand. Um, yeah. But it, it was beautiful. Yeah. Um, another yeah, question. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, another question was, and you briefly touched on this in the beginning, how many nights is a typical destination wedding? Normally, um, you have to do a minimum of three nights. So in order to secure rooms um, through a room block contract, you have to have three nights minimum. So, and most people are not going to travel internationally for less than three nights anyway. I would say 80%, 90% of our room block contracts are for four nights. So we do a long weekend normally. Um, your guests can always extend three nights on the front end, three nights on the back end. So again, we, we usually start the main block with four nights on our contract, but then guests would just notate that when they fill out the form on your website that they'd like to add nights on. And as long as it's available at the hotel for the room category they want, um, we can request it and get it added on for whatever additional nights at that group rate. Sounds good. The next question we have is, can I tour the resort before making a decision on the location or before having a ceremony? Yep, absolutely. Um, if you're going to do that, we recommend once you talk to me and we sort of narrow down, you know, your top two or three, we figure out which destination, maybe there's two resorts or three resorts at that destination you can't decide, or maybe you have your top favorite. Um, you need to, to move quickly to get there. Because again, if you're trying to tour a resort before you've held your date and time, which some people do, you need to move quickly. Now, if you are going to proceed, you know, this is the resort you want and we get your uh, contract, we have secured everything. Yeah, they offer, you know, it's called big day preview. A lot of them call big day preview. It's normally two to three nights max. Normally it's two where they'll give you a very deeply discounted rate or they will charge you, let's say a thousand dollars that once you do your big day preview, that thousand will be credited um, on your wedding ceremony invoice. So it'll ultimately come off at the end. Um, so yeah, just about every brand out there offers some sort of preview. If you feel like you want to get there um, and just talk to a planner and see everything firsthand, absolutely, you can do that. And you would just let me know. Um, and then we would work with the planner um, to, to get that set up. And then the last question we have here is, do you handle excursions for guests? And you did touch on that, saying that we do handle that. I just wanted to add is that we provide so much information for destination wedding guests. I deal with a lot of the guests myself and um, especially with COVID and protocols, we put together all that information for the guests ahead of time. I even put together a list of, you know, Andrea's favorite restaurants at some of the resorts. 
some fun tips um, that you know they won't find online. Um, but yeah, um, if you can speak to that a little bit about the details for the guests. Yeah. So uh, so again, you know, guests turn this into a vacation. So um, most want to do at least whether you do a group. Um, a group activity and we have some couples as a nice thank you for those guests that come um, they want to do a group catamaran so we arrange a, a group catamaran one night or or, or or some sort of tour excursion we had somebody that did some atv um, tour uh, for their guests um, a few months ago so we have a recommended um, different excursions and tours that you can do and whether you do it as a group or um, we just are helping your guests individually arrange that. They'll absolutely get recommendations from us. Again, at 30 days prior to travel, they're going to get links to view different excursions um, that we recommend. So we really try to give your guests as much detail ahead of time as possible so they can get what they want arranged um, and, and again, the communication really picks up at 30 days prior to your event, but guests email us every single day with questions, whether it's spa or um, dress code or, you know, whatever it is, we, we're happy to answer those questions. That's it. I think uh, we got all okay. the questions. Okay, good. Okay. Well, I, I was trying to keep this to 30 minutes, but I, you know, it's a lot of information, um, but I promise you we, we try to keep it as stress-free as possible. And really once you narrow down, the most stressful part is you're gonna have some great options to choose from. And, you know, the stressful part is really finalizing which, which resort and which destination you're, you're gonna go with. Um, that seems to be the hard part. And then once that's all secured, then the fun, the fun stuff really begins when you can get your website out to your guests and you, and you see that people are, booking rooms. Um, we create a Google spreadsheet that you have access to real time. So you can see as your guest book, we're updating that with when they're coming in, what room they picked. And that's fun. You, you know, you start to, um, you know, gather your headcount and see who all is going to come with you. So um, again, we, we love this. It, it's a lot of work. Um, for us, but for you, we keep it really, really as stress-free as possible. Um, and our couples love it. And we have so many guests that go to these destination weddings and maybe they're engaged and they had thought they were gonna do a domestic wedding. We have guests that go to these destination weddings and come back and reach out to us and say, we, you know, we absolutely love this. We now wanna do a destination wedding ourselves. So it really is a fun, you, if you haven't done one, um, haven't attended one, it really is a, a, a fun, unique way um, to, to celebrate with your family and friends and celebrate over multiple days. So I want to thank everybody tonight for joining. Thank you, Ellen, for fielding the, the questions and please feel free to reach out. Hopefully some of you will sign up with me for a consultation and um, we can get you off somewhere great. So thank you, everybody.